So this shouldn't come as a shocker, but I don't think you need a video essay for me explaining just how massive Pokemon is as a franchise. And by massive, I of course mean number one media franchise in the world. There's just no stopping this powerhouse of a franchise from somehow being successful, even though they quite literally make just about the same exact games every single year, sell it twice, and then rake in millions upon millions of dollars each year. It just prints money. What's also impressive is that Pokemon has a very small amount of competition for its size. And there's no game that follows Pokemon's style or formula that's nearly as popular as it. There's only four forms of competition Pokemon has. Markets, that Pokemon has entered in an attempt to take them over, like the Pokemon TCG, Pokemon Go, etc. Random toy franchises that cycle in and out of popularity like Bakugan or Beyblade. Fan games and ROM hacks that Nintendo and Game Freak eventually banish to lawsuit hell whenever Polygon or Kotaku think it's a good idea to make an article about them. And finally, games that genuinely try to piggyback off of the formula and success of Pokemon by creating their own world filled with monsters. Temtems comes to mind here, but it didn't pick up near enough popularity to even come close to challenging Pokemon's market share. The last option is where Pal World comes in. I can guarantee with absolute certainty that this game is going to release as a buggy, unpolished, incomplete mess. Considering Pocket Pairs, the developers of Pal World, current Steam reviews on their game Craftopia, I'm only more sure of myself. They announced Pal World as in development and going to release soon in 2022 without even finishing Craftopia, which is still an early access. This doesn't seem good from a small independent Japanese team, especially when you learn Craftopia made them abandon another game they made before called Over Dungeon back in 2018. The game never really got finished, never got updated to live up to its full potential, and this developer will most likely do the exact same with Craftopia and eventually even Pal World. What's crazy though is that after watching the reveal trailer and looking through the Steam page to see all of the things you can do in this game, I don't really care. I know morally I should care. What this small team is doing isn't right, and you shouldn't do this. That shouldn't have to be said. But I will still absolutely waste my money on this game the second it releases in early access. Nintendo and Game Freak have done a really good job at curating the squeaky clean image of Pokemon's world. Things like eating Pokemon and bringing up the fact that as a trainer you're essentially going out into the wild, beating up random animals, capturing them against their will, and then forcing them to fight other animals who have suffered the same fate. These points have been addressed by, okay, well actually, okay, Pokemon still get eaten and that's just a thing that happens sometimes, I guess, but instead of being animals captured against their will and forced to fight other animals of the same status, they instead just enjoy it. A bond between between a Pokemon and their trainer is quote unquote one of the strongest in the world and the Pokemon actually enjoy fighting. <laughs> okay. Pal World has taken this sanitized world and instead just gave us every single fucked up idea we always thought would be in a realistic Pokemon world. Just look at the Steam page. You can see the slow descent this page takes. We start out simple with mentions of hunting, maybe eating the pals for survival. You can fly, swim, dig holes, and explore the world with them. Then they start bringing up things like you may even need to consume pals some Sometimes. Or, don't worry, labor laws won't be applied to PALs, then they just full send it. It is essential for automation to let PALs do the manual work. Build a factory and place PALs in it. They will work forever as long as they're fed until the end of their lifetime. Literal Pokemon slave labor in a game. And it doesn't even stop there. You can use these things as meat shields, exploit them for their resources, poach them, combine them, and even fucking eat them. How does that not sound like something you should at least try, especially if you're a Pokemon fan. So, in conclusion, Pal World is a game where Pokemon that aren't Pokemon but look very similar to Pokemon can be captured, poached, and put into slave labor for our amusement, made by a small independent Japanese studio that might just be abusing early access and their ability to make cool ideas and then not deliver on any of them and eventually abandon the game, that I 100%, without a doubt, will be buying the second it releases in 2022. Game of the fucking year, baby, let's go!